All right, well, folks, um, I have the distinct pleasure now of being joined by Mr. Greg Laidlaw, uh, former Scotland captain, 76 caps, 714 points. It's been quite a career for you, Greg, and um, now today you've announced that you're moving to Japan uh, to join the NTT Shining Arcs. Um, could you tell us what was your sort of motivation behind that decision? I think, first and foremost, it's an excellent opportunity for me to to continue my rugby career, essentially, and, and certainly a new part of the world for um, one, probably for rugby, and then two for myself. I just felt it was a, an excellent opportunity to go and experience something, something a bit different, and uh, and, and test myself somewhere else. Yeah, um, when you were in Japan for the World Cup, you you seemed to be uh, quite popular amongst the fans there. Um, why do you think that was? But <laughs> with all respect, meant of course. Uh, you know, do you think it's maybe to do with? Um, I thought maybe that your twenty six uh, match winning performance, twenty sixteen match winning performance against them. Um, maybe they respected that, but I mean, what was that, that like for you? Because I, I imagine you've ever been mobbed like that before. Yeah, it was it was pretty surreal to be honest. I, I think it, a lot of it came from the actually the 2015 Rugby World Cup uh, when we played against Japan down in down in Kingsville um, because Japan had played against South Africa in the game before, and obviously they, they beat South Africa. And then, uh, the next game was against us, um, so I can't remember the numbers, but a large amount of uh, num people watched the game on TV in Japan. Uh, I was captain of Scotland. I was kicking and uh, I played, you know, not too bad. So I think off the back of that, I seemed to pick up a, a fairly big following. And then uh, 2016, I think, just helped. Okay. Uh, at the Shining Arts, how long is your contract going to be there? Is it a couple of years or just the one? I've signed for two seasons, yeah. Two seasons, yeah. Um, do you have, was there any other overtures from Scottish Rugby Union to come back here or... Um, was it just, did you think, I'd, I'd rather keep playing and learn something new, um, learn a new culture and what have you? I was, I was pretty fortunate that uh, I had a, a couple of different options uh, throughout the world. And, uh, but the Shining Arts, um, they, they, they came at me and, uh, you know, I just felt that with their organisation, uh, the, the, how they sort of wanted me, they wanted me for my experience to go over there and, and I just felt, you know, in a rugby career and, and like any sporting career, you only get one one chance at it. And, you know, if, if I didn't take the chance this time around, it, it would have passed me by. So, um, yeah, it was almost too good an opportunity. Yeah, they've also announced they, they've signed um, Australian flanker Liam Gill and also uh, Anaru Rangi, the, the Kiwi um, hooker. Um, I've also looked at the squad. They've got some some really good players there, like Christian Lea, Lea Fano. Um, are you looking forward to playing with the guys of that calibre? Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's that's one of the, the, the great things about travelling, going to different clubs and, and testing yourself is but you also get to play with really good players in around you as well. And I've seen the, the, the players they announced this morning alongside my announcement as well, which is awesome. Liam Gill, I think, just finished up in France as well with Lyon. Um, so he's heading over there now. So yeah, it'll be excellent. And I think you know, certainly through my experience from playing in France and, and probably a little bit in Gloucester is... You know, the foreign, uh, or certainly the, the guys that don't come from that part of the world tend to look after each other. And so I'm looking forward to, you know, getting over there and, and meeting the, the foreign group of players. Um, obviously, playing in England and France, it's quite a sort of forward dominated game. Um, what do you think the playing style will be like in Japan? Do you think it'll be a bit more a bit more open? or? Yeah, definitely. It's, it'll, it'll be a lot more open. They'll try and play a, probably a slightly more New Zealand type based uh, game it's it's quick it's fast it's trying to get some offloads into into the game and stuff like that so and i think with with some of the new rules that are coming into the game as well it it should uh, it should suit the the style of play so yeah i'm looking forward to to getting out there when when i can and and and, and becoming part of the the culture and the squad at uh, NTT Okay, um, uh, you're a younger man than me but uh, obviously after the the two seasons are up it's uh, but you me looking to, is this going to be your last playing contract, do you think? And then uh, what's your, your plans after that? Do you have anything in mind or are you just going to sort of play it by ear? Oh, I think it'll probably be my last playing contract, I would imagine, for sure. It's, time waits for no man and I'm certainly no different. So, um, yeah, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll certainly get over there, do, do my couple of seasons, then we'll obviously I'll see where I'm at. Uh, in the long term, I'm pretty passionate about. Uh, you know, helping rugby in, in Scotland for sure and, and certainly being involved uh, somewhere 
um, when I come back to Scotland, that, that would probably be the grand plan at the moment. I do have another few things going on off the field, which is really probably, I think, is really important. Um, so I'll just take away with a few things off the field as well, just in case, you know, um, you know, once you spend a long time in the game, sometimes it, it might be not not be a bad option to have a couple of, a couple of different things on the go. Yeah. Do you want to divulge anything there or is that uh, the top secret? Ah, oh, there's certainly not not top secret, but um, I work um, with my management company really closely, Red Sky Management. And they're big on like a double career track. Uh, they call it, you know, alongside your, your sporting um your sport, uh, whatever that chosen sport is for that individual, and they always try and run something alongside it. So um, I'm interested in in business, I guess. Um, I'm doing a lot, a couple of things with with Savills at the minute, just sort of learning a little bit about how they operate. Um, I'm involved in a in a restaurant as well called Mac and Wild, um, which is a couple of Scottish guys started up down in London and. Uh, we've got a place up up north as well, so I've got a couple of different things on the go, and I'll I'll probably start to uh, hone in on on what I'm going to exactly do in, in a couple of years' time. Yeah, now, um, if we must reflect back to the, the Japan World Cup, uh, obviously not the the best of times. Um, th- there was a few players afterwards that said they felt that it was quite a stressful uh, sort of camp and experience. H- how did you find the whole thing, other than you know the constantly being mobbed by fans? Well, uh, in a national rugby, it, it's tough. It can be can be quite stressful. So it's uh, that's probably no no surprise. But yeah, it's disappointing. Obviously, from from a Scottish perspective, I think we we probably underperformed. Um, we certainly underperformed in, in definitely the Ireland game first and foremost, and uh, you know put ourselves under big pressure. And probably the seeds were sown then a little bit, to be honest. And, um, yeah, so it was a pretty tough. Uh, Trip tough competition for us, and you know, oh, it's credit to Japan. You know, they played well, and we never defended well enough in that last game. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, then that Japan game, we've looked at the stats. Apparently, they made no errors at all. So that's that's quite it was quite a remarkable performance from them. Um, had you made your mind up to retire from the international scene before you headed out there, or was it a sort of see how you feel afterwards kind of a deal? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd pretty much. Decided uh, in my head, I think that there was going to be my last last campaign with Scotland and, and probably my last trip. And uh, again, as I sort of touched on earlier, time waits for nobody, and, and I'm no different. I think it just felt like a, a the right time, in my opinion, to, to move to move on and, and let the young boys come through and, and try and take it forward. So um, it's uh, it's been a great great time and great part of my life, and uh, you know memories I'll have for a lifetime. And, you know, but it's uh, it's now on to another group of players that uh, you know. Hopefully, they can go off, go forward with the jersey. Uh, with regards to that number nine jersey, um, obviously there's uh, Ali Price and George Horn kind of battling it out for the the Warriors and Scotland starting spot. Pargos is there as well as a backup. Um, who do you think is the the right man to to lead Scotland forward, taking over, filling in your boots? Well, I think you know probably Ali's in the in the best position at the moment, in the moment because you know, he's probably slightly more all uh, of an all rounder in terms of that controlling aspect that you need at international rugby as well. And you know, but certainly George Horn, somebody that's, got, that's obviously going to be there for the next number of years, and uh, he's an exciting uh, rugby player and an exciting halfback with you know a lot of speed and skills. And yeah, so it's going to be good. Two slightly different players, so yeah, I think that's always a good. Good mix, you know. We obviously got one star and one on the bench, so to, to have that slightly different mix of of uh, halfback is is a good one. Okay, there's that um, now sort of famous meme of uh, uh, Graham Love made of you with Adam Hastings and Finn Russell, and um, sort of you as the father sort of figure reining them in. Um, who, I mean, obviously Finn Russell's quite a sort of maverick kind of guy. Who's who's your favourite? Ten partner that you've ever played with. You played with him quite a few times for Scotland. Was it something like thirty-four? Uh, yes, I think, yeah, I think it was thirty-four. It was. Uh, I think it was a Scottish record actually. So it was. Um, yeah, it was pretty nice to get that with Finn. And yeah, I really enjoyed playing with Finn. Yeah, he's he's um, he's just got excellent skill sets. Um, excellent rugby player, and yeah, I think he can just. He's probably the best attacking ten going around. To be honest, so he's an excellent talent. And, and certainly, you know, I want to see him back in a Scotland jersey, and 
you know, as well along with Scotland. But you know, having said that, Adams, Adams a good player too. He, um, you know, he, I think he done well in the Six Nations, and he showed that he can probably control Test matches as well. So it's again, it's it's healthy for for that competition. And I think you know, if needs must, I think something because Finn's such a good rugby player, he could he could push out to maybe twelve as well. And again, that gives Scotland a a different option, not necessarily start there, but you can you could move out there, you know, later on in games and, and gives the, the team a slightly different dynamic. Yeah, um, yourself and Finn are uh, obviously two of the, the sort of most more recent Scotsmen to have won down at Twickenham when you were playing with the Barbarians. Uh, one question we always like to ask is uh, if you were playing with the Babas, what socks would you wear? But having done it yourself, what socks were you wearing? Yeah, I wore my Jed Forest socks. Jed Forest. Yep. Sure did. Yeah. So what's the, what's the build up to the the Barbas camp like? Because you were only together for, but were you even together for a, a whole week. Um, yeah, just under the week. Um, yeah, it's excellent. Uh, I think it's just such a a unique um, opportunity and a unique week, I guess, in in the life of a of a, a now professional rugby players because you don't get their weeks at all. If you're in a big test match week, obviously it's certainly not like a Barbarians week when you you know you get out, you get to have a few beers and, and basically relax and. You don't really go in with a game plan. You just go out there and throw the ball around and, and see what happens. So that uh, was an awesome week. And, you know, again, that's that's part of the fun is getting to play with some brilliant players. Yeah, semi Randrada in that game was, um, as well as Finn, they were, they were sort of sensational. Uh, who, who do you think is the best player that you've you've played with and then against? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a question I get, you know, asked quite a lot. I think the best... Player I probably played against would be Dan Carter. He's uh, he's one of the class. He just everything he done. I think you know he's, he had it all. He could pass, kick, run, tackle. Uh, he had great vision. He just always he he was one of the players. He always had time on the ball. Um, and I think the best player I probably played with is is a guy called Iso Toyava, um, who played with me down in Clermont. Uh, he's an All Black as well. And he was capped really young for the All Blacks, and he probably would have had a few more caps if if, he, if his body had held up. But he's um, certainly playing with him down in Claremont was brilliant. And again, he was one of these players. He just seemed to have really uh, a lot of time on the ball uh, when when sometimes he didn't. Um, so what was it you think that like the All Blacks? They just seem to have a conveyor belt of talent. Um, you know, it's obviously you've played with a few guys from New Zealand. What is it you think that sort of separates them from from the rest of the world? Because they, they're a small country, but the same size as Scotland. But obviously, sort of rugby's ingrained in their DNA. So, you know, do you think is there anything you've picked up from them, or anything that that they've um, mentioned to you, which makes you think this is why they are so far ahead of everyone? I think the the history of the of the All Blacks. I think that that helps a lot because then. You know, the players are pushing so hard to, to make themselves the best best players they can be to, to try and make the All Blacks. And I think that in itself is, is such a powerful thing because you need to be the best of the best to, to, to play for the All Blacks. So I think that really helps. I think any time I've, I've played with All Blacks or played against them, that they always have a real good skill set in terms of just their skill errors. They're pretty much zero. Um, and, and I think they get that right throughout the right throughout the pitch. You know, whether that's a props, you know, second rows, they can all play the ball, they can all uh, read the game. And I think that's just how they get brought up, understanding the game in, in their country, and and, the, and I guess the attitude to try and play the game. Hey, um, obviously, you're a busy man, Greg. So I'll, I'll be quick. The last couple. Um, would you rather have a flake or a twirl? Uh, flake. Flake. Yeah, and uh, as well as with the. Uh, the Japanese fans, um, you seem to be a bit of a dark horse uh, favourite amongst the ladies. Um, uh, a couple of whom are listeners to the podcast. Uh, so if you could, could you just send out a wee shout out to uh, Rhiannon and Yvonne for us, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Hi, Rhiannon and Yvonne. I hope you guys are well. Yeah, um, cool. You might, you might have restraining orders against them already. I'm not too <laughs> sure, to be honest. Um no, but that's that's great, Greg. Um, oh, actually, is it, is it Greg or Greek? We've been arguing about this. Just Greg. Just Greg. I, I thought as much. But some people have been said otherwise. Um, look, Greg, thank you very, very much for joining me here. Um, that's been fantastic. Uh, you enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy your time in Japan. Pleasure. Thank you. Th- thanks, Greg. Cheers. It. Bye. 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 bye.